There is no Plan B because there is no Planet B. Decades ago, environmental scientists had warned us about climate change and its irreversible impacts on our planet. The most robust prediction of the apocalypse demanded that we cut our carbon emissions to zero by 2030 to continue living on Earth. Yet the general consensus on climate change has been pretty varied, from denouncing its reality to switching to green energy. Today, climate action remains wishful, and as we prepare ourselves to fight a climate catastrophe in the name of El Nino, experts worry that perhaps it's already too late. In this video, we're breaking down the most devastating case of El Nino and what it means for us, the economic damage that will incur, and lastly, why this particular weather system will forge a new century of environmental destruction. Before we start, give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. When humans trace the turbulent trajectory of climate change, all statistical data points to the Industrial Revolution as the inception point. Back in the 1750s, humans had exponentially increased their use of fossil fuels to build so-called sustainable economies. We all know how that plan went down the drain. Today, school children are out on the streets protesting for climate action and young protesters from Just Stop Oil are throwing soup on priceless art pieces to garner the world's attention towards our dying planet. We have come a long way since the Industrial Revolution. While that game-changing event is our legacy, we're living through more recent and disastrous climate catastrophes. One of those apocalyptic climate events is El Nino that changed our world forever in 1997. Here's the thing. If we had to retrace the explosive pathway of climate change today, we're sure the devastating impacts of the 1997's El Nino would pop up. That was the year when our planet's average temperature rose up to an exponential and life-threatening degree. Believe it or not, in a blink of an eye, the air's temperature had warmed up by 1.5 degrees centigrade or 2.47 degrees Fahrenheit. As a statistic alone, that's absolutely diabolical. But if we had to look at the impact of that slight temperature change through a microscopic lens, you'd see world economies collapsing under extreme weather conditions. Since El Nino is an irregular periodic variation of the winds over the Pacific, it brings a spectrum of climate catastrophes in the tropic and subtropic areas. This complicated system yields devastating and diverse weather conditions. In 1997, California was affected by one of the most extensive rain spells, while Indonesia was compelled into the worst drought ever recorded. And this precise duality of El Nino makes it a harbinger of the climatic doom that the scientists have warned us about, quite repeatedly as well. As it stands today, El Nino is officially back, and this time around, the apocalyptic events from 26 years ago would look tamer in comparison. On June 8th of 2023, National Weather Service reported, El Nino conditions are present and are expected to gradually strengthen into the Northern Hemisphere, winter 2023 to 24. Experts describe the weather system as the warm phase of the Pacific Ocean's temperature cycle. And this year, El Nino is expected to send shockwaves into an already deteriorating climate on a global level. Like its 1997 predecessor, this year's system is going to be an all-encompassing and destructive, just on a bigger scale. El Nino will give a turbulent, unprecedented rise to heat waves, push Africa into a drought, strengthen rainfall in South America, and whatnot. Asia, in particular, is already experiencing some record-high early-season heat waves. Remember the unprecedented heat waves that had ravaged the continent in 2022? Well, those galvanized temperatures weren't unprecedented exactly. Due to El Nino, countries like India, China, Thailand, Myanmar, and Pakistan are a few notable countries living through extreme heats, and the summer has begun. We had already expected that the developing El Nino would further aggravate the human-induced climate, but what's really unchartered is the economic devastation that would ensue. As per the World Meteorological Organization, El Nino will have far-reaching repercussions for health, food security, water management, and the environment. We need to be prepared. There's no doubt that El Nino will be super costly to the global economy in multifaceted ways.
Dubbed as the climate event of the century, the 1997 El Nino had a tragic impact on economies across the world. It was estimated that the weather system had generated a cumulative loss of $5.7 trillion in income losses in countries affected by adverse climate conditions. Previously, experts were suspecting El Nino to put a hefty dent of $96 billion on the global economy, loss of livelihood, acute food shortages, and inflation. But the reality was far more bleak and destructive. To make matters worse, the lack of overall preparedness and emergency response had caused more human damage than expected. Despite valiant efforts by state governments and non-governmental organizations, the death toll reached 23,000. And this year, we're expecting to see a bigger and more significant statistic for loss of life across the globe. Plus, the economic damage is going to be insurmountable. To be fair, the loss of human life and economic devastation are the two sides of the same coin. One seems to aggravate the other. The sheer loss in food crops, inaccessibility of life support and evacuation, and various waterborne diseases are fundamental economic losses. And these factors, as well as the others, are one of the biggest impetus of the death toll in 1997. During the same time, the acute drought and large-scale environmental damage from uncontrollable wildfires had propelled the world into a massive pang of hunger. And then we know what happens next. It's a film that we've seen before and, well, we have never liked the ending. Consequently, El Nino created one of the most endangering cycles of inflation ever. Food prices were off the roof and even basic diets became inaccessible to the most vulnerable populations across the world. While richer and developed countries were well equipped to sustain the most affected communities, the developing world had it worse off. States that were already fragile due to human-induced climate change had considerably less resources to deal with El Nino, and the devastating weather impacts pushed them over the edge right into a socio-political and economic crisis. El Nino had grappled with various developing economies like Peru, Ecuador, Papua New Guinea, Indonesia, and more on a household and communal level. It's safe to say that in 2023 and the following year, more resource-lacked countries would be experiencing a new New environmental catastrophe that'll push for a large-scale climate migration. And well, the world isn't ready for that at all. You see, back in 1997, the forecasting of El Nino was subpar at best. The world was still coming to terms with the idea that our world is rapidly losing its habitability due to man-made activities centered around big economies. If the truth is being told, many didn't want to believe that El Nino was a spitting image of a long-term climate apocalypse that would have a permanent or irreversible damage on Earth. Not to mention, the idea that a climate event can cause socio-political crises was also a new one. Now, things are much different, of course. Even though we have more robust forecasting of the crisis today, thanks to technological advancement, the problem remains largely unsolved. News alert, we've barely taken any effective climate damage. And this is precisely why this year's El Nino is going to be another climate catastrophe of the century. Finding the video insightful so far? Give us a like and subscribe to our channel. According to a science study, El Nino would have caused $84 trillion in financial damage by the end of this century, even if all the countries meet their pledged carbon cuts in a blink of an eye. This is exactly why this year's El Nino is bound to sting a lot. And since most states are already behind fulfilling their sustainable development goals and cutting their greenhouse emissions, the weather system is going to be far more durable and destructive. The current discourse on climate actions is a massive proponent of disproportionate responsibility. While secure economies like the US and China are at the forefront of the highest percentage of carbon emissions, many underdeveloped states are still vouching for their right to burn. The argument here is that the countries who were late to the neo-industrial revolution shouldn't be cutting off their emissions to fight a problem that had very little contribution from their end. Simultaneously, the most vulnerable states are making their own individualistic cases for climate reparations that seem to implicate developed states who forge their economies at the expense of sheer carbon emissions. 
Even though developing states want their economic predecessors to foot the bill of environmental damage in their vulnerable zones, the discourse is slow and ineffective. All in all, when El Nino takes the world by a storm, the most vulnerable nations would have inadequate resources to deal with the challenge, and the economic devastation is going to be unprecedented for one underlying fundamental reason. And in the years to come, states will spend a major chunk of their revenue in sustaining everything that has left. On the other side, developed economies will be looking at an influx of climate refugees. And whether they find a safe haven or not is up for a debate. Found the video interesting? Give it a like and hit that subscribe button.